Welcome back. Arizona's new Democrat attorney general dismissed a lawsuit seeking to block President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. The Biden administration proposing a new revised pay as you earn repayment plan that could have some borrowers paying as little as zero per month. Joining me right now is the Sentinel Action Fund president and Heritage Action for America executive director, Jessica Anderson. Jessica, good to see you. Thanks very much. Where do you think this is going? Well, thanks for having me, Maria. It's, it's great to be here. You know, elections have consequences. It wasn't too long ago that we had a Republican attorney general in Arizona who was leading the fight to oppose Biden's student loan amnesty. Now we've got a Democrat in there, and he's overturning the lawsuit. And so this has implications for any state that's changing hands from Republican to Democrat. But I think the bigger picture is important here, Maria, which is that the Supreme Court is still going to hear two cases related to the student loan debt wipe away in February. That is still on track, irregardless of this partisan act by the new attorney general of Arizona. Yeah, I mean, what gets me, James, is this, this is just more free money. And we're all talking about the fact that the United States has just breached its debt ceiling. Yeah. Okay? At $31.4 mm -hmm. trillion dollars in debt. And here we have this administration continuing to push out free money. Yeah, and I don't think anyone can argue that Biden's student loan policies did not uh, in accelerate the uh, speed at which the U.S. Treasury collided with that limit. This is part of the reason why we, we've hit it uh, so quickly, Jessica. And I, I think for a lot of people, they're wondering, when does the law matter? Uh, the, this shouldn't, shouldn't it be an act of Congress? If Congress intended to allow the president to change the rules on student loans and transfer these debts from borrowers to taxpayers, wouldn't they have legislated that? Yes, I believe so, and I think that's exactly the merits of the case that will be before the Supreme Court in February. And we've seen this before with Biden, where he goes right up to the line and, in many cases, over the law, like he did with the rent eviction moratorium last year, and then the Supreme Court went the other direction. So that's I think that point, will be yeah. interesting to see. I think you're also right um, about the impact of the student loan debt with our debt limit. We know those negotiations are heating up right now on Capitol Hill. This is obviously a factor of $31 trillion right. worth of debt. Yeah, and, and by the way, the New York Times weighed in on this uh, debt ceiling debate in a since-deleted tweet. The Times claimed that the debt ceiling has increasingly been used as a political tool by both parties. They've since corrected the statement, writing, quote, both parties are responsible for the debt, but Republicans are using it as a political <laughs> tool. Todd, this is rich. It's rich, but I think it also underscores a problem that we talk about ad nauseum here on this show and other shows is the fact that the people that read the New York Times for their news now get a distorted view of the world and don't understand the ramifications of the debt ceiling. And if they think this is just a Republican problem, they can poo-poo and don't realize that both parties do this. Are they going to be absolutely shocked when that bill ultimately comes due for their kids and their grandkids, Jessica? The debt limit is actually the tool for the American people to put Congress in check on its spending. And it's a really important tool. And so I think as negotiators are figuring this out over the next several weeks, we need to be very uh, clear about what the American people want, which is that we don't want increased spending. We think that there should be cuts. They should be dollar for dollar, and they should be matched with commensurate programmatic cuts like regulatory reform or pulling out the parts of the budget that no longer work for the American people. Yeah. That's what we want to see, and I'm, I'm actually hopeful it'll be a more transparent process under the new leadership of Speaker McCarthy. So yeah, we'll I mean, see. That, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, he's meeting with Democrats as well to try to get their buy-in to identify wasteful areas. Jessica, I want to turn to the document scandal. Attorneys for former Vice President Mike Pence revealed that they found a, quote, small batch of classified documents at his Indiana home. The White House, meanwhile, is continuing to stonewall, dodging questions uh, about this. We're talking about batches of classified documents found in Joe Biden's possession. And the other day he said, well, there's nothing here. I have no regrets. What do you think about this issue? Well, you couldn't have a greater contrast between two men. I, we all know the vice president. He's a man of integrity. And as soon as the documents were found on his property, he immediately reached out, is working with protocol, trying to get to the bottom of it. 
unlike Biden, where we don't even know the timeline in November from when the documents were found, when the American people actually learned about it, how long did the DOJ hold on to it? And there's just such a contrast here. And frankly, I think it goes back to our just larger cry from the American people right now, Maria, which is that we want transparency and accountability from our federal government. We're not getting that when the DOJ is weaponized um, in support of one political party and not another. And I think this case really just shows the contrast in a pretty short amount of time here, the last few weeks that this has been going on. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a, a, been a stark double standard between the way Trump was handled and the way Biden has been handled. They allowed Biden's lawyers to go through his things, and, and they right. told Trump's lawyers they have to be gone and turn all the cameras off as well. And I wonder if that's one of the reasons that the DOJ is trying to look tough on big tech. I mean, you know, hear me out here, because the DOJ has been sort of busted and exposed for being in bed with these companies, directing Twitter on what to amplify and what to suppress suppressing truth, amplifying lies, and, and now, you know, all of this about the double standard on the classified documents, and suddenly we get this tough DOJ on Google and everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Maria, in politics, we call that a head pat, right? Is it really going to be real? Are they going to follow through? The DOJ has a lot to answer for when it comes to their work behind the scenes over the last four years um, with Twitter. We saw this with the Twitter files. We, saw, we see it further with big tech. All of that is going to come to light under, I believe, Chairman Comer, the new oversight investigation uh, chairman of the new House. He is going to expose all of this. They've got a lot of work to do to yeah. connect the dots behind the scenes. I'm confident that they will do it. Well, James Comer will be joining us in about half an hour, so we'll ask him about that. Jessica, thanks very much for weighing in. Jessica Anderson joining us this morning.